okay so once the designer uh, screen is completed so now we'll go to actual programming part so you select the blocks uh, screen so once uh, once it's selected you get a blank uh, screen right like this so first thing is we need to add uh, a switch when switch is changed so just go to switch and drag this block when switch one dot changed so when it is changed what we need to do so first thing is we need to see whether it is changed to off or on position so for that go to switch again here you can see this block over here switch one dot on it will return true if switch is on so select this and keep it here so we need an if statement go to control and select if block drag and drop it here and select this okay so if switch is changed and if it's on position you need to make a get uh, you need to make a HTTP request of uh, making it on so that's why go to web URL web uh, uh, block sorry and then uh, uh, select this set web one dot URL two. so place it here inside this one and then uh, set URL to select an empty text and this will be our on command so for that go to our uh, command copy this on command paste it here all right so when switch is in on position it will set the url to on command so similarly select an else statement and then copy the same thing and paste it right there and make this as off all right so on and off is completed now we need to make a get request using this url so for that go to web1 go to call web1.get all right so this will make a get request using a url property so this is a url uh, so it will make a get request using this url for on and then this for off so once it makes a get request it will also give a response so for that we need to read the response so that uh, will be available again in this web uh, web one component in this web one dot got text so drag and drop it here so we just need a response code uh, we know that if it's a successful http request it will give a response code of 200 so for that we need to check that so for that we use again an if statement so if the response code is 200 we'll uh, uh, set the label one earlier to leds on so for that we'll make use of one variable so we will initialize a variable called uh, status and we'll initialize it to led is sorry or the light is off all right so once we uh, turn on the light here we need to initialize this variable to light is on so for that go to variables again set it set the global status to light is on so similarly when it is off we need to make it light is off all right so now here when response code is 200 we'll just display the status so for that we need to use a comparison block so go to text compare text so we'll compare the response code so for that just uh, hover your mouse over the response code and you will get this get response code and place it here and that should be equal to 200 so for that go to text again select the blank text and replace it with 200 so if that is equal to 200 then it will display the status so just uh, go to variables get and uh, we need to make that label so for that go to label one and set the label text here and that will be equal to get the global status so similarly there is an else so select the else and copy the same thing and paste it again so if uh, that is not equal to 200 that means if there is any error so you need to display an error so delete this and then just display that there is an error empty text 
and this will be error okay so that's it for uh, this uh, programming so now we uh, will test this okay so once the ap uh, application is ready you can uh, test it on your uh, android phone so for that you can use an uh, ai companion uh, app from mit app inventor you can download that on play store so that can be used to test the application that we have done so go to play store and uh, download the mit uh, app inventor companion app it looks something like this so here on the screen go to connect and then you can select a companion so once you do that you will get a qr code so here on the app click on scan qr code and then scan it so once you have uh, scanned the qr code you can see the uh, app being uh, displayed on the phone so this is just for uh, 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 the testing purpose so the app is uh, actually not installed on the phone this is just for uh, testing you can just uh, test it so now you can see that light switch is displayed when you toggle it you can see the light is on and the led glows and then uh, if you toggle it off light is off and the led doesn't glow so now the test is complete so that is working so now we'll uh, we can make the apk file and then we can uh, download that onto our phone and then install it okay so once you are satisfied with your application and the testing is done you can uh, deploy it onto your phone so for that you need to build your application so you can go to build and you can select android app so here so that's it uh, for this uh, programming here you can give uh, any of your status i had made a uh, light is off now i had made uh, leds off or on you can give anything uh, for the status and then uh, this is how the code is done so once it's uh, done go to build and then uh, build the apk so once you do that it will give a progress bar and then it will uh, prepare to uh, build your apk so once that is done it will give an option of uh, either downloading it on your uh, uh, computer or uh, you can scan a qr code so that will uh, directly download the uh, apk file onto your phone so once that is done only thing is to just install it on your phone and you can see that the app will be working fine so once uh, as you can see that download is uh, the building is complete the package is ready so we can either download or scan this qr code onto your phone so i'm clicking on uh, download the apk and that will be downloaded okay, so here you can see that the apk i have downloaded and installed it onto the phone so just uh, press the uh, apk and you can see that the application is running so just click on the light you can see that the led is on and you also get the feedback led on and then if you press once again the led is off so now we'll uh, connect this to a relay and uh, we'll see the same working and we'll try to control the night lamp okay so we'll connect this to the relay so as a power supply for the usb8266 i'm using a, a power bank so this is just for demo purpose you can connect it to the laptop or uh, any uh, 5 volt adapter all right so now uh, we have three pins coming out from usb8266 the gpib0 uh, was connected to led before so that is directly connected to the signal pin of the relay so this is uh, the signal is uh, how we uh, control the relay to make it on or off then we have a uh, ground and the vcc pin uh, from the ESP8266 that will go to VCC and ground pin of the relay so then we have normally open connection in the relay so that is connected to the night lamp so this is a night lamp uh, that I am going to use and then I am going to connect that to the output AC socket so this is the connection for the relay so this is exactly same as the one that we did in the relay video i leave the link in the description of uh, how to use the relay you can watch that for this detailed uh, connection so now i'm uh, going to uh, plug this to the output uh, socket uh, for, the, for the ac and then uh, switch it on 
so as you can see uh, initially the relay is off so that is the reason the night lamp is also off so now uh, we'll uh, try to control it with the help of the application that we just built so this is application that we just built so we'll uh, power it on as you can see once the switch is turned to on you can see that the night lamp is glowing so now uh, we'll uh, switch it off and you can see that the LED is off and then the, even the night lamp is off okay so that's it for the tutorial hope you liked it so in my next video uh, we'll see how to control this over the internet so that means uh, you can uh, sit wherever uh, around the world and as long as you have an internet connection you can control your household appliances so that's it for this uh, tutorial and we'll see in the next video thank you